Welcome to 5 Minute School. Today's video will be talking about the regulation of the glomerular filtration rate. I've included this diagram here which shows the nephron tubule and the blood supply as well. You can see we have the afferent arterial which provides blood uh, for filtration to the glomerular capillaries. This is where the process of filtration is occurring and then the blood is taken away from the glomerular capillaries via the afferent arter sorry, via the efferent arterial and then it proceeds to go to the peritubular capillaries. In this region here we have secretion and excretion of ions and various molecules and then the blood will then return uh, to the inferior vena cava via the renal vein. So if we have vasoconstriction or vasodilation of the afferent arterial, this would affect the rate of blood flow to the glomerular capillaries and therefore would affect the glomerular filtration rate. So as I've written here, the changes in the diameter of this afferent arterial would affect the glomerular filtration rate. So we can have these changes occur due to a variety of regulatory mechanisms. They can be either in extrinsic or intrinsic regulatory mechanisms. An example of the extrinsic mechanisms can be via, for example, sympathetic nerve innervation and the intrinsic regulatory mechanisms which affect the width of this afferent arterial can be, for example, renal autoregulation. And we'll be discussing both of these factors and mechanisms in today's video. So let's first talk about the sympathetic nerve effects. So an increase in sympathetic nerve activity stimulates the constriction of afferent arterioles. And when I say uh, an increase in the sympathetic nerve acti activity, I'm talking about, for example, the fight or flight mechanism, something which is gonna increase the blood pressure. So we'll have constriction of the afferent arterioles. And what this does is it helps to preserve the blood volume and divert blood to the muscles and the heart where it's required the most. Now I've included a little flow diagram here just to help explain it. So we have some form of stimuli which uh, would either reduce the blood pressure or increase the blood pressure. Uh, exercise would be increasing the blood pressure so it's detected initially by baroreceptors and then via the baroreceptor reflex we have increased sympathetic nerve activity. and. From this, we'll have an increased cardiac output. We'd have vasoconstriction of afferent arterioles in the kidney, and we'd have vasoconstriction to the skin and gastrointestinal tract. And the effect of the vasoconstriction of the afferent arterioles in the kidney would be decreased glomerular filtration rate, decreased urine production, and increased blood volume due to preservation of uh, blood and less filtrate production. Now let's talk about the intrinsic mechanism. So we have something which is known as renal autoregulation. So this is the ability of the kidneys to maintain a relatively constant glomerular filtration rate despite varying blood pressures. So we've mentioned that uh, the external mechanisms are one of the ways uh, the body can regulate the glomerular filtration rate, but renal autoregulation is a type of intrinsic mechanism. So it's the way the kidneys can sort of regulate themselves. So in renal autoregulation, the afferent arterioles dilate when the mean arterial pressures fall below 70 millimeters of mercury and the afferent arterioles also constrict when the mean arterial pressure rises above normal. So the mechanism of this renal autoregulation Firstly, we have myogenic constriction of the afferent arterial. Remember the smooth muscle present in the arterioles. So the ability of this smooth muscle to detect and respond and respond to an increase in arterial pressure is one mechanism. So the first one is myogenic constriction. The second is tubuloglomerular feedback, and this is due to the effect of locally produced chemicals. So the sensor in the tubuloglomerular feedback is a group of specialized cells called the macula densa, and it's located in the thick portion of the ascending limb, where it loops back and comes into contact with the afferent and efferent arterioles in the renal cortex. The macula densa is part of a larger functional unit called the juxtaglomerular apparatus. And when we have increased delivery of sodium chloride and water to the distal tubule, which can occur when we have increased arterial pressures and we have a rise in glomerular filtration rate, the macula densa sends a chemical signal, and this chemical is known as ATP, causing constriction of the afferent arterial, and this reduces the glomerular filtration rate so that less fluid enters the nephron tubules, a response that protects the late 
distal tubule and cortical collecting duct from being overloaded. So that's the whole purpose of this regulation when we have a higher high blood pressure to prevent the um, nephron tubule being overloaded with filtrate.